Hello and welcome to Treasure Maps. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. Let's say that I've exported some data from some accounting system, ERP system, CRM system. Let's say that I wanna use this data in a report. The key thing to observe is that the labels are different. Here we have account names, here we have financial statement labels. So what happens when the labels are different between point A and point B? How do we get from point A to point B? One option would be to write unique formulas for each report value, right? We would go equals this plus this plus this, enter. Equals this plus this, enter, and all the way down. Well, there's a couple problems with this approach. First of all, it's not very efficient because I'm having to write a unique formula for each of these report values, right? It's not like I can just write one formula and then fill that formula down that's not gonna work, I'm writing unique formulas for each cell value, so it's inefficient. The other problem is it's fragile, right? What happens if I paste in some new values and they're not in exactly the same cells as they were last month? This approach assumes that checking account is going to be in C11 and will continue to be in C11, but what happens if the cell values change locations? Well, then we're gonna have a problem. For example, what happens if I just change the sort order? Currently, cash and cash equivalents is 89882. Now I've resorted the data, and now everything is broken. So it's inefficient and fragile. So what's a more efficient way to go from point A to point B? Well, it's by using a map. And a map provides the translation. And it's going to give Excel all the information that it needs to go from these labels to these labels. And this is Excel, so there are many different ways to actually implement a map. And over this three-part series, we're gonna look at three different ways to implement a map. What we wanna do is pull the values from the data into the map. The way that we're gonna do that is by using the SUMIFS function. The SUMIFS function is a conditional summing function, and its first argument is the column of numbers to add. So we want to add up this column of numbers, we just point to the range, comma, the remaining arguments come in pairs, and each pair defines a condition. For example, I wanna add up all of the values in the amount column, but I only wanna include certain rows. That's a condition. I only want to include those rows where the account name, comma, is equal to our account name. Close the function and enter. And since we wrote this in a table, Excel is going to fill the, that formula down. So now we've pulled the values from the data table into the map, and now we just are gonna use the same function, some ifs, to pull the values from the map into the report. So once again, I wanna add up this column of numbers, comma, I only wanna include certain rows, I only want to include those rows where the FS line column, comma, is equal to our FS line. Close the function and enter. Now I can just copy that, paste, paste, and paste. 266313, 266313. I think we got it. Okay, so this is one possible way to implement a map to help us efficiently get from point A to point B. It's efficient because this is a consistent formula that I can fill down. It's more reliable because I, I can change the sort order. Let's say I change the sort order A to Z. Nothing breaks uh, because we're using some ifs, which looks at the entire range, and so sort order doesn't matter, okay? So this is one possible way to implement a map. In the next video, we'll take a look at another way. First, we need to go and retrieve the data with Power Query. To do that, I'm gonna go to data from text CSV. I'm gonna browse to the data source and select it. And if this data needed to do some transformations to clean it up and prepare it, I could by clicking transform data. This data is ready to go, so I'm just gonna click load to. I wanna send this into a connection only query, so I click okay. We've retrieved the data, now let's go get the map. The map provides the translations. Once again, from text CSV, I browse to the map, and I could transform it if I needed to clean some stuff up, but this looks like it's good to go, so I will load to, and again, I'm gonna send it to a connection only query. Now we need to combine these two data sources. We need to merge them. So the way that we do that is get data, combine queries, merge. And I want to grab everything from the data table 
and I want to find the matching rows in the map. So if you're familiar with VLOOKUP, we would identify the lookup column. Here in Power Query, what we do is we just identify the lookup column by selecting the columns. And this looks good, so I'm gonna click OK. And in the Power Query editor, what I end up with is the account ID and amount columns, that's from the data table, plus the related values that it finds in the map. So what I wanna do is expand this and pick and choose the columns from the map that I want to include. I want the account name and the FS item. I don't need this, so I'll click OK. And now I only really need to carry forward the columns that I need. So in this case, I don't need the account ID, so I'm just gonna hit delete. If I wanted to reorder these, I could. I could just click and drag and click and drag, and that's fine. And when we're done, I'm going to close and load two. And now I wanna send it into a table, into an existing worksheet, starting right here, and click OK. All right, so now we've got that. Let me go ahead and close this. So now what I can do is use the SUMIFS function to prepare the report, to pull the values from the Power Query results. So equals SUMIFS. And I want to add up this column of numbers, but I only want to include those rows where this column, comma, is equal to this. Close the function and enter. And now I can just copy and paste paste, paste, and paste. 266313, 266313, and we got it. So again, we're in this series of different ways to implement mapping tables, and this is the second way, which is through Power Query. And now we're gonna look at Power Pivot and Pivot Tables. So just like before, we're trying to get some data translated through a map so that we can build a report. So what we'll do is we'll start by grabbing the data table. So we use Power Query uh, from text CSV. If our data needed to be cleaned up, we could transform data. Our data looks fine, so we're gonna load to. And here we're gonna load to a connection-only query, and we're gonna be sure to check this box, add this data to the data model. We click OK, and now we've retrieved that data table. Let's go ahead and get the map, and we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, from text CSV, we browse to the map, we could apply any transformations, our data looks fine, so we're gonna load two. Here we're gonna load to a connection-only query and add to the data model. Now that we've loaded our data and our map to the data model, we need to define the relationship. So what we'll do is we'll go to data and we can either use this manage data model button or power pivot, manage, either way is fine. We're gonna click diagram view and we're just gonna relate these two tables through the account ID column. So we're just gonna click and drag and we're gonna be sure that this is lined up to the account ID. And now that that relationship is created, we can use this as the source for our pivot table reports. So let's switch back to Excel and let's insert a pivot table. And we're gonna use this workbooks data model and we're gonna place the report in an existing worksheet. This is fine, click okay. Now we'll create one pivot table for assets and another pivot table for liabilities and equity. So let's expand these. And what we want is sub, we want FS line and amount. All right, I'm gonna right click, number format, number, no decimals, comma. And this is gonna be for assets, so I need to hide equity, I need to hide liabilities. So I'm gonna right click, filter, hide, right click, filter, and hide. All right, I need to change the order of these accounts, so I'm just gonna click and drag. Okay, that looks fine. Um, and now some additional cosmetics that we can do. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the plus minus buttons. I'm gonna turn off field headers. I'm gonna replace this with a space. Um, I'm going to go to insert some blank rows. I'm gonna turn on subtotals at the bottom. Um, I'm gonna change the design gallery and I'm gonna go with this one. Um, and actually I'll turn off column headers. Okay, cool. So this is actually looking pretty good. Um, and what I can do is I could build the uh, liabilities and equity pivot table from scratch, but since I already have one that looks pretty good, I'm just gonna do a copy and paste. All right, so the updates here. Let's go ahead and extend all this stuff and let's get rid of sub, and let's put in FS group. 
like this. Let's right click and filter and hide assets. And now we're looking pretty good. Let me go ahead and change this order here, there. Yeah, and I think this looks pretty good. 266313, 266313. So that's another way to implement a mapping table. Remember, the mapping table helps us efficiently get from point A to point B because it provides the label translations so that Excel can automate um, all the steps in between. The nice thing about using Power Pivot and the data model and pivot tables is that it is really fully dynamic. So if there are updated um, rows in our data table, if there's updated map, map mapping, um, all we need to do here is hit refresh all, uh, right click refresh, and since these are pivot tables, they're going to dynamically expand to include any new financial statement groups um, that come down in the future. Okay. Cool? All right. Hope this series was helpful. I hope it helps you implement uh, mapping tables um, to help you get efficiently from point A to point B. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user. If you ever need to create summary reports, check out my Pivot Table for Beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a Pivot Table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of Pivot Tables. This video is a production of Excel University.